going to get up out of my chair to control myself, and I'm going to go in there 20, 30 minutes, and I'm going to listen to David Icke today give our listeners and viewers a speech. Not an interview, but a speech. You, in fact, you got 30 minutes, David, and I'm going to come back and do another 20 minutes with you uh, on the other side. God bless you. David Icke, ladies and gentlemen, on how we're winning and how we're going to win and how the false reality is being lifted, the curtain is being lifted, and we are going to win. Resistance is victory. David Icke. Well, thanks, Alex. Uh, first of all, I would say that there has to be a fundamental change in the dynamics and the understanding of where the power lies. We keep talking about the fact that uh, the, the, the structure of society is built in, on pyramids and pyramidal power, um, with the few at the top dictating to the, the rest of the pyramid. But what tends to happen is we look at the top of the pyramid for the power in the pyramid, but that ain't where the power is. The real power in the pyramid is at the base. That's what's holding the capstone, the uh, apparent point of power, where it is. And what they've done is done a massive mind game upon the human uh, consciousness and persuade us that they have the power, that the dark suits and the, uh, the famous people and the people with letters after their name and, 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 and names before their name, president, prime ministers, head of the World Bank, that uh, this is where um, the, the power is. They have the power, but they don't. What this whole uh, game is about is getting the mass of the people persuaded that that's where the power lies. And so we, we look at them in awe, we, we think they, they're all powerful, there's nothing we can do because we're just Joe Public and we have no power. So we are giving our power away by the perception that we don't have it, but they do. It's all a mind game. And then you look at the, the, uh, the, the pyramid uh, structure. And you have the mass of the pyramid at the bottom, i.e. the mass of humanity, holding the elite up there. What are we doing? And I um, had a friend years ago. He was um, a, a, a British comedian. His name was Larry Grayson. And, and he died, and I went to his um, memorial service at Cotton Covent Garden in London. And another comedian told a story that Larry Grayson had told him about something that happened to him. And I listened to it, and I thought, that is so profound. Larry Grayson told, told him this story, that he was um, in, a, in a show in the, in the 1950s or something on the old music hall circuit in Britain, and it was an all-male show, and there was one woman in it, and that was Larry Grayson dressed up as Britannia in the last scene. The last scene of this show, uh, all, the sailors, uh, all the men came on dressed as sailors, and they formed a pyramid on the stage, and they were singing Rule Britannia, Britannia Rules the Waves, all that bloody nonsense. Anyway, uh, then Larry Grayson would come on, dressed as Britannia with the, the helmet and the sword and the shield, and he would get manhandled up the top of this pyramid for the big finish at the end of the show with him at the capstone of the pyramid. And on this particular night, he said, um, things had been going rather well, uh, but then he said he noticed that the sailor in the left-hand uh, corner of the pyramid had got rather a cough. And this cough got worse and worse and worse. And, and this uh, sailor couldn't hold in the pyramid anymore and, and staggered forward. What then happened was the pyramid collapsed. And Larry Grayson, symbolic of this global elite at the peak of these pyramids, ended up in someone's lap in the second row. And, and so we have to, first of all, re-evaluate and re-understand where the point of power is in this world. There are seven billion people being manipulated. There is a relative handful uh, doing the manipulating in full knowledge of what they are doing. So much so that to impose their will, they have to engage and employ people from the target population called uh, people in uniform and dark suit administrators to enforce and administer into being the, uh, the structure of control uh, that they are uh, pressing forward. So the, the target population even has to supply the enforcers 
and the administrators of this structure on the target population. That's what we're talking about in terms of numbers. So first of all, the people have the power. We have allowed ourselves to be persuaded that we don't, and therefore every day we give our power away to the few, thinking that's where the power lies. So we think that we can't challenge the, uh, uh, the law. Well, you know, you've got to be law-abiding. Well, why have you got to be law-abiding? If laws respect freedom and respect uh, human civil rights, they respect fairness, they respect justice, then fine. But if they are imposed simply to take those things away, to dictate to the fine detail of people's lives, to make the system unjust so the money goes to the tiny few and gets sucked out of the uh, majority population who are working harder and harder, more and more jobs just to stand still while, while uh, the, the bankers who have created this current economic mayhem at the top on purpose and, 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 and lower down through sheer bloody greed, um, they are paying themselves massive bonuses based on borrowed money that our children and grandchildren will have to pay back. That's what, what happens when the majority give their power away to the few. Now, when those laws are being introduced that are giving the, 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 the people the rights to do this, that are saying there's one law for the few and there's another law for everyone else, that are taking terrorist uh, laws in, in, in theory and, and applying them to the general population as it was always planned that they would do, then what are we doing obeying those laws? We should not be acquiescing to them. We should be uh, refusing to uh, obey them, refusing to acquiesce to them, because the real power is with us if we come together in numbers, in mutual support, we put aside these fault lines of religious differences, racial differences, income bracket differences, and we realize that actually this is not a, a conspiracy to um, enslave middle-class Americans or Jewish people or, or, or Muslims. It, it's a conspiracy to enslave all of us. And in, in uh, dividing and ruling us, um, they have got us fighting and arguing among ourselves, which is the only way that a few can manipulate the many by dividing the many in and on, on themselves. So first of all, we have to start to see where the dynamics of power is if we take it with the people, not the uh, so-called elite cesspit. Uh, level, um, and then once we've realized where the dynamic of power is, to stop dividing that power by arguing about who has the right religion, um, who, who has the right politics, and all the rest of it. It's all a nonsense. It's all diversion. People should believe whatever religion um, they want to follow and respect another's right to believe something else. Okay? You believe your religion? Yeah. I believe mine or whatever. I don't have a religion, but you know, any, anyone that does. Okay, well, let's have a beer or something. Just uh, and get on with it. So let, let's agree to differ. Let's unite, however, behind what affects us all and what affects all our children and all our grandchildren, no matter what religion, what color, what creed, what income bracket, what culture. And that is the fact that our basic human rights are being uh, eroded by the day. We're having a draconian, uh, soulless, uh, cold, callous, vindictive uh, force imposing their will upon us while we are divided. And, and when we stop doing that and, and we come together, then we say, okay, okay, we have the numbers, how do we use that? And there's a, there's a, a great example going on at the moment with the foreclosures. I'm reading now that um, it's being claimed that these the banks have been faking uh, documents to force uh, foreclosures through faster and faster because they can't cope with the numbers. Well, if that is correct, that's not coping with the number of foreclosures when people are actually leaving 
when they get a foreclosure document, and they can't handle that, so they're saying. Imagine if we took this one stage further and said, we are not leaving foreclosure document or not. They could not possibly cope with that number of people sitting tight and staying put. Where would they start? They don't have the numbers. Because here we have a situation, again, where we come back to a law that is fair and just and right, fair enough. A law that is there to fleece the population, to impose the will of the few, to literally steal their, their livelihood and their homes. What are we doing obeying those laws? Uh, so um, instead of doing uh, the, 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 the thing that most people do, which is the document comes, or oh, well, it's the law, we can't pay the mortgage, we've got to go. Instead of doing that, sit put, stay put. We're not moving. Why? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why, Mr. Mortgage Man, we're not moving. I can't pay my mortgage because my husband or me have lost our jobs. Why have we lost our jobs? Because of an economic recession and crash. Why did that happen? Because at the top of the banking system, systematically taking away checks and balances to keep a check and balance on the runaway greed of the banking system and most of the people that work for it, especially in places like the City of London and Wall Street. So at that level, they took the checks and balances away coldly and calculatedly because they knew when they did that unfettered greed would run riot. And that's what they did. Giving mortgages away to people they knew couldn't pay them, but they got the bonus as long as the, 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 the signature was at the bottom of the piece of paper on the day. And that has created this mess where unbelievable numbers of people are being foreclosed because of the banks and the banking system. And who's coming along now and saying, you can't pay your mortgage, you've got to get out and give me your house? The banks that caused the trouble. And we're leaving this is what I mean by laws that are not fair and not just and have no uh, uh, sense of benefiting uh, the community but just sucking them dry. What are we doing obeying these laws? No more acquiescence. We ain't leaving. And then the people start to use the numbers to take the power back and see where the power lies. Because it was like um, I, I, was, I was saying to Alex, you know, when I was seeing clips from uh, We Are Changed New York where they've confronted some of these people like Blair and, 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 and the Rothschilds and, and, and others, and they're completely lost when that um, awe is, is removed. Oh, he's the Prime Minister, he's Mr. Rothschild, and he's got two legs, two arms, a torso and a head. You know, why is he different from anybody else? It's the, again... The illusion of power, the illusion of omnipotence, that's how it's done. Like in the, uh, the, the Bugs Life movie where the grasshopper says of the ants, uh, they outnumber us 100 to 1, and if, if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. We must, as a human race, outnumber those manipulating us in full knowledge of what they're doing and where they want to go by unbelievable numbers, noughts over the horizon to one. And when we figure that out, there goes their way of life. There goes the ability of the few to dictate to the many. This is not an impossible situation. It's not a done deal. It's not game over. It's, it's another stage of the game that's starting here. We've reached a point where information has got out to enough people now for them to uh, realize in large, large and ever larger numbers the situation we're facing. Now it's time for the, the game and it's starting to take the next stage, which is the people in awareness of what's happening to take the game to these people. Like I said earlier, instead of standing there saying, what's the next move of the manipulators? Who cares? What's our next move in uh, relation to the manipulators? And I feel that, you know, that the more that we kind of uncover the individuals involved, instead of... Uh, protesting outside the White House and protesting outside Parliament in London.
um, which is basically protesting at the oil rags of politicians and, and, and not at the engineers that are behind them. We ought to start uh, more and more locating uh, these people and confronting them uh, who are behind the politicians, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and all the rest, the George Soroses, the uh, uh, Big New Brzezinski's, and all these people. There's a great list of them, and, and you know the information's there now. To, to track them down when they're operating in public and just keep at it. They got on a plane to Denver. Hey, you left our friends in New York. Here we are now. We've got some questions for you. And, and, and start to make them think, what is the next move of the people? Now the dynamics has changed. And this is what they're terrified of. You know, people see... Um, strutting, arrogant, all-powerful people. You know what I see? I see frightened little boys. And you, you know the bully in the playground? Uh, the bully in the playground, overwhelmingly, over and over again, I've found in my life, is actually a coward. The way the bully bullies and imposes his will on all the other kids in the playground is, here we go again, the perception of the other kids that the bully has uh, power and strength and, and, and great uh, courage. I had an experience um, when I was a kid when a, a, a bully and a, and a gang uh, turned on me in the playground and they were terrorizing the playground in a school in, a, in my own town. And uh, I had a word with my father. He said, look, Dave, he says, the only way you're going to overcome this is you're going to get the biggest one, get the bully and, and take him on. And uh, they came to me uh, one afternoon and they said, right, you, the gang and, and him, right, you, in the toilets, we're going to sort you out. They were going to beat me up. That's what they were going to do. And instead of running as they thought I was going to do, I said to him, all right, then, let's go. And I went in, this, in these toilets with um, at the school with his gang behind him and he, he was trying to beat me up. He didn't. He didn't because it was all a facade. He didn't know what to do because now the mouth has got to... Uh, deliver. He couldn't deliver. And they all left, all of them. Never landed a buddy punch on me. And, 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 and they left. And after that, no more problem from the bullies because they'd been found out what they really are. And that's what this network of Illuminati families are. They're frightened bullies and their only way that they can prevail is persuading us we, uh, they have power. They don't. When we unite and stop being in awe and stop thinking little me and realize that we can do anything we like. And the reason most people don't do anything is, is on one level, yes, okay. They, they, they think they don't have the power to do it. But on another level, it, they're finding excuses not to do it. It's not that they can't do it. Uh, people are doing it all the time. These two young fellas that were in, in, my, in the, my hotel room here a few minutes ago from We Are Change, they go out and confront these people. And they're taking this next stage forward of instead of standing on the other side of the, of, the, of the street waiting for the next move, they go and make their next move. And this is the, the, the spirit. This is the lack of intimidation that we need. And the more people do it, of course, the more people will see it's possible and this whole thing will go on. Because we have a choice. We can go on as we, we, we have been and, and, and thinking the powers in the, in, the, in the peak of the pyramid that we're holding up there, and in which case this whole con, uh, control system will move on and move on and move on. Or we can see where the real power lies and express it and take it back. And that includes people in uniform. Um, uh, and it includes people in dark suits, uh, administrative positions within the system, who, through compartmentalization, have no idea that they are playing a part every day in enslaving their own children and grandchildren. When you've got people in uniform that think they're fighting for America, when they're fighting for the very force that is uh, uh, going to, or is uh, intent on destroying America. At the moment, the United States is being used to destroy the United States because when you have a, uh, a world government dictatorship, you cannot have superpowers that have the, the uh, military and financial might to say no to you. Otherwise, it's not a dictatorship. And what we're seeing now is the, is the, uh, the armed forces of the United States uh, being stretched to uh, the limit being used for uh, wars of, ac uh, of uh, 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 acquisition and all the rest of it, but not on behalf of the United States. 
on behalf of the force, the network that controls the United States and controls uh, London and controls the European Union, etc., etc., controls um, Israel. And, and the e economic might of the United States is being systematically undermined because they cannot have America as a superpower and a world government dictatorship. They're using America to destroy America. And you in uniform and you in the dark suit professions administrating this, this stuff into, into, into being every day, you are playing your part, not in serving America, but in destroying America on behalf of these um, insane people. It's time to take our power back, the time for Americans to take America back, and, and the British to take Britain back, etc., etc., from this network, this uh, spider's web of interconnected secret society networks that have their uh, tentacles, their, their whatever uh, symbolism you want to use in every single country. When, when people in Britain are trying to get uh, stop the uh, Orwellian state coming in there, and people in America are doing it, and people in, the, in, in Australia or Africa are doing it, they're, the people they're challenging is the same global network. We're all in this together globally as a human race. It's time to say enough. And that's, there's that great line, if I can remember it, from a, a British poet uh, called Shelley, which I, I, I've used in my latest book, uh, where the, the, the poem goes, Rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep has fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. When we figure that out, there goes their way of life. Is Alex still sitting there? <laughs>